Hey folks, I'm uh, back at uh, Players Classic. We've got Benny Reese, old friend of Retro Rides here, with his fabulous Celica, and uh, just going to have a talk about what he's done to it and why he's done it and all of that stuff. Bit of a legendary car already, this car. So, uh, how long have you had it? Uh, I've had it six years now. Six years? Oh, it feels like longer. And did you, did you have, a, did you always have a direction with it, or did you, have you just like over time your kind of aesthetic has changed? Because you seem to constantly be changing it up. Have you got somewhere you're aiming for, or are you just seeing what's working for you? Yeah, I have got. There is an end goal in mind, but because I'm keeping this car forever. I'm literally doing it just in stages and just enjoying every single bit by bit by bit. That's nice. That's so yeah, it's going to get crazier and wider. And yeah, a bit sillier, nice. but so uh, you got your uh, you got your racing jacket. That's a new addition since last time I saw it. Yeah, I've had that in a box for quite a few years now. I've not really had the balls to kind of drill the because <laughs> the bonnet folds this way. Yeah. You have to it pings open on these little hinges. And you had to, you had to, yeah, like drill holes. Drill holes in your car. Yeah, it's gonna get. It's always a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> so your um, chin spoiler has been on for a while. Yeah, that's actually a sunny truck. Oh, chin sunny truck. Yeah. Uh, not not gone down the um, Golf TTI chin spoiler that everybody in the UK goes no, down. I did that previously and they just yeah. explode. Because ev like everything's pretty authentic. Like because you're, you know, you import stuff from Japan. You're, you're that kind of. One of the things I like about it a lot is it. it I, I like seeing European people modify Japanese cars with just whatever they've got. Yeah. But I also like the authenticity of this one because, you know, you're finding the rare bits. You're finding the parts that are hard to find. I mean, like the racing jacket and all that stuff, and you're going that extra mile. Correct. Yeah. So that I guess it's that like an overarching approach is like to keep it sort of in period with what would be done on this, I'm guessing probably kind of mid 80s yeah, style. Yeah. yeah, I've got a Trans Am kit, which basically, it's not, I'm not actually touching the arches yet. It just comes around and sweeps around. It, it looks like over fenders, but it's, it's not actually cutting anything yet. Cool. Possibly in the future that might happen, but you know, the arches are rusting already. And... Is that the next evolution? Is that what you're about to put on? Yeah, the Trans Am kit. You heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> So your um, your wheel collection is quite extensive. Yes. Um, how often are you changing the wheels on this? Not too often, really. I put these on like two years ago, but obviously last year didn't happen. No, no so uh, yeah, these, these have been on a little while. I've got the next set lined up, ready to go on it. And uh, these are what, Riverside? Riverside R101s. Riverside R101s. <laughs> um, hard to track down for you or are they? Uh... Uh, I got the front pair off the twice. And then the rear two were actually singles from Japan. Oh, did you, that's another thing. Like, I noticed that you occasionally you'll, you'll have like three of something wheel, and then finally the last one yeah. comes up and you get it over. I've got, you know, I'm playing the long game. Yeah, Just but it's because you know where you want to be, I guess. Yeah. If I see a cool wheel, I'll, I'll, I'll have it, and then because you can relip them, you can. It doesn't matter what spec it is, as long as the, the inner barrels are the same you can just pre-lip and uh, make a set yeah. so if you follow shoot all on that their instagram we'll do a graphic somehow um and uh you can go and follow him but if you follow his stories he's forever polishing wheels forever cleaning up dirty looking wheels that have arrived in boxes <laughs> Fender mirrors? Yeah, they're, they're stopped. They're stopped? Yeah. Not, not, a, not an after? So, so the, the car itself, was that originally an import or is that a UK yes, car? It's originally an import, yeah. Ah, okay. Did you import it or did you find it from somebody? I found it for sale on, online and uh, I got like a, a middleman to do the bit for me, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sweet, 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 sweet. So, uh, you're, you, I mean, you imported it, like it's your, your import? Yeah, yeah, it came, came over for me, yeah, yeah, first owner. So let's, uh, let's head back. I mean, obviously the whole shape's fairly iconic, like you've done, I mean, this is all just 
you know, completely stock, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, the bodywork side of things. So you're lowered, this is all like proper it's on a bits and pieces. It's six coilovers, yeah. I mean, does that retrofit relatively easily to these? Yeah, or? you have to put uh, A86 front brakes on, but that's mm. the only... only well, that's, that's worth putting on anyway. Yeah, yeah. Get a little bit of stopping power. Um, Engine-wise, your stock, your... Yeah, it's just a standard 18RG, 2-litre twin cam, 8-valve, twin carb. It gets you to where you want to go? Yeah. Yeah, I've just put the trumpets on it, so it makes the noises. It makes all the right noises. Yeah. And then uh, you got your... Duck, you built this duck tail spoiler, right? Yeah, the, the car came with the uh, centerpiece on, and I wanted... You, the original ones, they curve round, which looks a bit too trans army for me. And there's a company called Mizuno Works, yeah. and they do the kind of squared off spoiler. And I really like that kind of style, so I just... I wanted to have a go and I just kind of formed it out of clay and then went over the top of fiberglass and I've never used fiberglass before so I thought I'd have a go. And this is what's brilliant is that you're like you knew you wanted this part yeah. and you just kind of went for it and gave it a go. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's kind of inspirational. It's perfect, but, but I, it's kind of do some more paint, but... nicely inspirational I think. <laughs> yes. I, I, the other thing, in fact, I was just saying this to someone that one of the things about Japanese cars is people have this vision of them as being like these perfect cars. But they're not really, they're, no. just, they're just guys hacking together crap in their garage yeah. and it, it's brilliant. And I think that this is kind of like a great example of that. It's like, you just put it out, it's not perfect, but if somebody in Japan had made this, it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even when you go to Japan and see a yeah. car, you get near it and you're like, oh Christ, it's yeah. not quite as tidy as it looks in the picture. If you've got um, Enjoy Retro Cars, if someone's kind enough to bring those for you at a show, <laughs> um, the, um, the cards in there that they feature, they're just like not perfect and, yeah, I, and it's, 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 it's stuff. yeah it's weirdly like it's more inspirational as well i don't want to see a magazine full of half finished cars but like it's got a really nice mix of particularly when they feature whole clubs where you've got the guy with like the standout car yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the guy that's just still working on his and you're just like oh okay these are all the same people and they're just like diverting their stuff together so and this just in isolation is representative to me of everything that's great about this car and the way that you deal with it in that it's authentic yeah. but it's also you having a go and I love it <laughs> so uh, that's great the exhaust is exhaust is a custom stainless steel all the way and through got the um you can see we put the torch on oh. kind of see the, uh, <laughs> the flake's not quite big enough I want to get some bigger flake on it because when it's a cloudy day like this you can't really see it uh, it's just great though. It's like a nice little touch. Again, it's like that slight Japanese kind of street yeah, scene it's type. Yeah, something they've done in the 70s. Yeah. You know, I kind of want to do the same thing. You got your number, did your number plate have any significance? Uh, I got given those by Mechadoc. Kazoo oh. San and Mechadoc. He's in Osaka. He paints all the Kanjo Racer cars. Oh, and he nice. gave me, when I visited, he gave me a pair of these that Osaka amazing. plates. Yeah. That is amazing. So yeah, it's kind of sentimental value. Yeah, no, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Um, these are red lights all the way across the standard, or is this an no, aftermarket? I've actually wrapped these ones in a, uh, a translucent vinyl. Oh, it, it, yeah, it just really nicely ties it all together. Yeah. That's awesome. So what we got going on in here? <laughs> you got your fan. You've got your cigarette. Yeah, the tulip. Uh, we call that the tulip. The ashtray. tulip. <laughs> tulip ashtray. Um, you've got another. You got what, a coke can holder, if, as it were. Seats or this seat at least. A hippo racing seat. Hippo racing seat. Again, imported. Yeah. Steering wheel, Nardi, obviously. Yeah. Everyone's got to have a Nardi steering wheel in Japan. Um, you've got all of your uh, your your stickers. Any. Any particular favourite sticker you have on this car? Um, I think easily get like little sentimental ones. So you get There's one on the back spoiler with the wing work. It looks like the um, Godspeed You logo. Ah, nice. it's, um, it's a guy called um, oh, what's his name? Hirokatsu San. He 
He's basically got like a car garage and he's got one of these Salikas as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like you got your uh, your tissues. Yeah. Are you all right? tissue box. Uh, are, you, are you taped exclusively uh, J-pop? Is it? I, I literally won a box of tapes on the auctions and I'm just going through them seeing what's on them. Because <laughs> I can't read what the... Uh, oh yeah, I think the thing is, I'm assuming you're um, Google translating all your Japanese the same as the rest of us. Are you, are you learning Japanese? You try? Yeah, yeah, I've learned hiragana, katakana and... Yeah, you, you can kind that, of read yeah, it. But you know them, it's kind of a bit easier. But Yeah, that's good, that's good. With the auto look pedals. Oh yeah, all, all, they're awesome. mega money now. So, yeah, yeah, crazy. Even just for accelerator pedal, you know, you're talking hundred and something quid. Wow, pedal, yeah. That's so I've put re, well, I've kind of refurbed them with new grip tape and new stickers on them. That's awesome. Yeah, I get getting those sort of little aftermarket parts, uh, uh, the sort of details that you only get when you're a little obsessive about these things. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that sort of. Um, that's carefully combing through pictures in magazines, I'm assuming. It's a lot of research over the years, yeah. It's taken me years to find my kind of niche, like, interest in cars. I've always liked cars, but 70s, you know, early 80s Japan is just... That's where you're... Yeah, it's exa yeah, exactly where it is. Is there anything particular about it that, that you like? Like, what, is it just purely the aesthetic, or what is it that draws you to it, do you think? I don't know, I think it's just... They're just always low and always, you know, got different wheels on. And it's just, yeah, it's just, they've just got so much character. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. Like, I mean, you know, obviously we're quite into our Japanese cars as well, and, and they have character, I think. It, it, it's that they're not, there's no... Uh, quirkiness to it. Yeah, I think that... I love hot rods and customs and stuff, but there's a certain level of custom that is just almost sterile in how good it is. Whereas these have a quirk. I think it's probably exactly correct. Um, I love this thing. It's... Uh, it's one of the stars, I think, of like the UK Japanese scene. You and the Kamikaze Playboy guys uh, are sort of yeah, uh, like holding that torch for like doing things well, and um, yeah, absolutely love it. I mean, it's not perfect. It's 45 years old. It's shown its age a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Of... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too fast. If it was perfect, I would be less inclined to drive it. So at the moment, I love chucking it into corners and you know using it and abusing it. It's a real car. In, in in the way that it's it's used, I have to t we have to talk wheel spec actually before we go. Right. So you're uh, what are we running at the front? Fronts are eight and 14 by eight and a half. 14 by eight and a half running. Uh, one eight five sixty. Nice. And then the rears are 14 by 11 with a two two five. Hey. Two two five fifty. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Again, a very Japanese thing to be running high uh, sidewalls on a stretch tyre. Yeah, they're a bit thick for kind of back in the... Yeah? Finding 14 inch wide tyres is a yeah, nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the, the, the problem. I was like running 165 65s and it, it gives you a nice stretch on yeah. a 7. Yeah. But actually it's mainly because that's what I could find <laughs> as far as it went. Yeah. <laughs> um, Awesome. Ideally, I want to go a bit less profile. Just a little bit. Just a touch. Yeah. Well, you've got some other wheels you can try them on. So. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, mate, I'm over the 100 mark. So. You're 100 wheels. Yeah. Well, there you go. Let that be an ambition for anybody watching. Get yourself 100 wheels and a crazy <laughs> Japanese car. And you can be as cool as Benny. And he's a very cool guy. So thank you very much for uh, showing us around your car. And I look forward to seeing it again, because I look forward to it every time I see it. Thank you very much. See ya.
ますご注意ください What are, they, what are they trying to tell us? <laughs> Back of Shamas, Katrina could decide. Reversing, please be careful. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs>